Hi there and welcome back to CNC Modeler. Today we're looking at the radius axis on my Polar Printer. So uh, last time around I uh, ended up with a bit of wood on here and so I've uh, made an aluminium plate and uh, as usual when you start things you have to tidy up the workshop. So uh, we've got this uh, aluminium plate and I'm going to try and uh, put these radio axis on. So what I've got is I've got some rails and I'm just trying to sort out some centers there to get those rails uh, mounted centrally. Now I've got to fit everything in around the um, linear bearings and the bearing blocks. And there's quite a lot going on on this um, on this mounting plate. Uh, so as you see over time, it just gets uh, more and more filled up. Um, so I was trying to get uh, some uh, pillow blocks that I've got um, to fit on some rail that I bought, and actually it wouldn't the bearings wouldn't slide on some uh, the pieces of rail that I'd bought to run them on. So uh, I ended up cutting down some other rail that I had. Uh, unfortunately, the length that I needed to cut off for those uh, bearings, which are going to eventually carry the um, carry the uh, pulleys for the radius carriage. Um, that little piece of uh, uh, shaft uh, was just the right length to cut off the end of the other long shaft that I needed uh, because I'm going to make a uh, like a crane style gantry for uh, the radius axis to try and give it a bit more stiffness. So as you can see here I'm just uh, mucking about trying to understand how all this will go together. I've got a second piece of uh, rail that I'm just mocking up uh, the other pulley for the uh, if you like the z-axis end and then you can see I'm just trying to get my head around how all the belts will work and all that sort of stuff so the idea is is to have um, two pulleys uh, effectively one for each rail so now I'm just uh, laying everything out as you can see I've got some um, shaft mounts and those pulleys and I need a plate to go at the other end of uh, the radius axis to pull all that together so um, I don't know if you guys have come across people like Alex Steele talk about blue diking quite a lot and I don't have any of that but what I have found is really great is if you get some uh, marker, permanent marker and just uh, mark that where you want to mark and then use your scribe and of course I went on and cut all that out on the uh, uh, bandsaw and clean the edges up and generally so I want these holes for the rails uh, to be well first off they need to be um, vertically drilled and they also need to be in the same place I'm not that bothered about how accurately they're placed but uh, they need to be in the same place to keep place to keep the rails at, uh, parallel so I decided to clamp the two parts together and see how that would work uh, so uh, you can actually see here for the 8mm top rail I had a reamer so I actually reamed that out to size uh, the other 12mm holes for the main rails I had a, a really nice um, sharp fluted uh, yeah, sharp fluted um, drill that kind of uses a reamer. I know it's not great, but um, it's to get it as close a fit as I can. So uh, with all that in place, uh, you can see me putting on the um, rail supports and then just trying to sort of size up where the pulleys for the belts is going to go. And um, that took quite a while to figure out really because um, there's quite a lot going on. As you can see, I'm using at uh, each end. I'm using two rail supports to try and give it as much stiffness as possible. And uh, yeah, so just trying to center everything up and get those um, pulley bearings working properly. Um, it's just taken a, a while to try and line all that up, and mark it all out. And uh, over the next sort of few videos, I'm basically going through and just. Um, drilling all this out and uh, basically trying to fit all the parts in to where they need to go. Uh, it's quite a sort of interesting time going through it. As you can see when I've been marking things out, if you want to get rid of the uh, lines, the marker that you use, you just use some, I think it's white spirit I've been using to sort of clean that off and then uh, get back in there and uh, remark. I ended up having to move the pulleys around a few times just to get it all to fit and uh, I think in the next video um, for next week you'll see that I actually got that wrong um, but uh, we'll go into that when we get there. As you can see I'm also using open bearing blocks for the z-axis 
uh, open bearings as well. The idea is, is that if I need to provide a little bit more rigidity, in, mostly in torsion on the Z-axis, that um, I can go in and put an extra pair of U-bolt clamps on and some bolts just to butt up against the uh, the 20 mil rails that I've got in the Z-axis for the vertical. As you can see there, it's starting to come together and um, really that's all sort of, well, I'm slowly getting there. The belts took a while to get my head around. I know it doesn't seem too tricky, but you know, all these things when uh, A, the parts are costing money and uh, yeah, the rest of it is you're just trying to get it all to work. Um, it's amazing how much, even when you've thought through the sort of design in CAD, when you come up with the parts in your hand, it really can be quite tricky to get all this together. So uh, then uh, as I'm going through, I actually needed some shims. So I needed, if you remember in the last video, I said I needed four mil of packing. Uh, so that's to pack off the um, uh, lead screw nut. Um, now actually, yeah, when we get to the end, I, uh, I found out that I'd packed out the wrong side. So I should have packed out the... Um, pillow block that holds the z-axis lead screw um, but uh, on this video you've got it now if you can see that black line coming across the screen in a second you'll probably start seeing what looks like a mouse or something crawling across the um, camera as well and unfortunately that was my um, microphone falling off the top of the camera so I apologize for that I didn't notice it as you can tell I was engrossed in what I was doing so you can just see me putting that uh, that uh, um, lead screw nut on uh, just to size everything up. And now I'm just going, trying to go through and uh, sort of clean things up and start to properly assemble all these pieces in together. Uh, it seems to go together reasonably well. Um, I still am going to have to do quite a bit of fiddling about to make um, everything sort of fit and tram up and uh, just generally yeah there's a there's a fair bit of faffing in all of this and uh, but at least it's all coming together uh, so as you can see that's the bolt holes that hold the uh, rail mounts onto the plate and now we're just into getting the fixings and starting to really bolt all this together to make it a permanent assembly um, as you can see I used the persuader a couple of times, so when you're doing these things manually, if I do productionize this, it'll all be cut on my CNC mill, but I really didn't want to have to go through that process. This is a prototyping process, so there is a bit of uh, trial and error, but what you find when you're doing this manually is tolerance buildup is a real problem. So you can drill holes, you think accurately, but you end up having to dry and drill holes uh, sometimes a couple of mil oversize just to get every all the bolts to line up especially when you're moving sort of four or five different holes and you're all trying to keep it all sort of related properly um, so yeah quite often I'm going back in and opening holes up and generally just um, working through that process of like I say prototyping um, I'm sure if you were uh, an experienced machinist and you you know went through this and wanted to do it and I'm sure I could go through and do it and get it all right on the CNC machine. Um, but I I just like working this way. And, uh, you know, that's the way it is, really. It's good for me. So uh, here we go. This is the um, last part of uh, the build. So I've basically assembled all of this and I've got it on the uh, Z-axis itself. And as you can see, it goes up and down okay. Um, the vibration you're seeing, if you're noticing it, is because that drill is very poorly aligned to the um, coupler, shaft coupler. And to be honest, I think that coupler, I bought it pre-drilled and I think it needs going on the lathe because I don't think the hole in the middle of that coupler is right. There's also still the squeaking and uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but we'll figure that out. So anyway... Thanks for watching, folks. I'm um, really glad that you are following along. If you do enjoy my channel, please do subscribe. Hit that thumbs up. Uh, it helps a lot. And hit the notification bell and you'll get uh, 
point it out when I my new stuff comes along. I'm also on Patreon, and there is an early access tier in terms of support. So thanks very much for watching. Hopefully see you again next time. And if you do like my stuff, please check out my other videos. Thanks now. Cheers.